Hello everyone, welcome back to Fanblade. It's Nick Day. We've made a lot of progress in the last video. And uh, yeah, we're keeping the momentum going. So, it needs a bit of cleaning up. There's quite a lot of squeeze out. Uh, looks like a nice tight join though, so this is a good thing. Uh, where the headstock comes to is about there, although it's not. It's actually going to come a little bit further than further this way on an angle, uh, and also the surface stops there. So I need to plane quite a bit off this angle here. And then, yeah, a truss rod. I have one of AliExpress's finest. Here is the fingerboard blank. This is a piece of quiller. It is a slightly different shade. That's all right. We're going to ebonize it, uh, so it's going to wind up looking, well, hopefully like ebony anyway this is the same piece that i made the fingerboard for the electric upright from so uh yes it's got an ever so slight bow to it when i cut it uh, but that's all right when that's glued on there that'll uh, give it a little bit of back bow that'll just help the truss rod along being decking timber uh it's got these grooves in it but you know we'll uh, plane those off and by the time we radius the board uh, it, it's not even going to be an issue and i've got this block here which is just going to be a little bit of extra width on the uh, on the sides of the headstock. So that's where we're up to. Let's get on with it because there's plenty to be getting on with. hit our first design problem. Essentially I haven't accounted for the extra length of what this ne needs to be quite long. I can't plane any more off of this surface to try and extend out there because otherwise the neck blank's just going to be too thin. So that leaves me with a couple of options. If we line up the edge of this flat surface there with this point here where the fingerboard ends on the pattern, then effectively at this end uh, I'm missing two frets. I'm kind of fine with that. What that does mean though is that the neck pocket becomes two frets smaller. So I'm considering just splitting the difference and shoving the whole thing that way a little bit uh, just to get a bit more meat in the, in the neck pocket. That will require the bridge to be shifted that way on the body which means I may have to make a slightly smaller bridge because I'm making my own bridge anyway. Uh, I can do that. <laughs> This is one of the pitfalls of prototyping, is you learn things as you go, and what I have learned is that this is going to be a 22 fret base, and the bridge is going to be um, compact. That's just how this thing's played out. Lesson learned, multi-scale necks, make a longer neck blank. Lesson learned. Right, truss rod. And that is how you make binding out of quiller.
lessons keep getting learned. I had originally routed this out so that the access for the truss rod would be there, and that the end of the truss rod, this is just a spear one, the end of the truss rod would be sitting right at this point where it would normally be if this angle wasn't here. But then I realised that that angle is there, so the whole thing had to shift that way. Uh, and that meant I had to extend the slot at the other end. Now what that means is that the end of the truss rod is now getting dangerously close to where I want to slice through here. Uh, so, again, the neck blank's too short. I'll know more about how much of a problem this is when we take the clamps off, but for now I think it's probably time to just move on. I'll set this to dry, and then we'll uh, work on something else. I need to start having a serious think about the hardware that's going to go on here. Uh, I can't get to the shop to buy some stainless screws for the bridge, because it is Easter weekend and that shop is shut. However, I do have everything I need to make the pickup. Now, I like to put my pickups around about sort of centred across the 37th fret position. That just seems to be a position that has just just the right balance of girth and growl. It's kind of uh, uh, it's a, it's a little bit further back than you get a P bass, so it's about where Music Man stick their pickups. So it just seems to seems to be a nice spot. Uh, so I've done the measurements uh, to find out where it's all going to have to sit. So I'll, I'll do that. Then I can measure the actual string spacing for the pole pieces across whatever angle I wind up with here and that'll be the basis of uh, the pickup that I'm about to design. So this is what I've come up with. Uh, we have got uh, 22 millimeter wide bobbins. We've got 19.5 mil spacing on the pole pieces, uh, and of course uh, the whole thing's set at a 64 degree angle around there. I've done a few pickup making videos now. I'm not going to go through and explain my entire process because, quite frankly, I don't have time to go through it all again. I just have to get on and make the thing.
So just while I was waiting for the uh, glue on the flat work to dry, I went ahead and made the housing and uh, you know, it's, it's a fine, it's a standard housing that I would make. I've given myself a little bit of extra width just to, uh, so I've got some room to play with and get everything to line up nicely. Uh, and everything does line up, except that I made a mistake. Can you spot it? This is the top of the pickup. This is the bottom of the pickup. If I flip that over, then we have a problem. <laughs> Geometry is weird. Um, uh, the solution to the problem is that I've cut another uh, piece of that, and I'm going to glue that on that side. And I'm glad I've given myself a bit of extra height to play with, because I'll just need to very carefully cut that one off. And then I'll have the pickup, which will sit there, will look backwards compared with this picture, but it'll be the right way up once we flip it the right way up. Well, so the theory goes. And while that is drying, I am, of course, going to uh, be winding these coils. Um, I'm going for a slightly fatter design than I normally do, uh, just because I thought it might be fun to make a couple of jazz bass style pickups. They'll take about 8,000... 8, 8 to 9,000 winds each. Um, and uh, I am considering actually wrapping some tape around the... Uh, screws just so that I don't have bare metal on bare metal in case anything happens and it winds up shorting out. Um, I'll just put a little little wrap of insulation in there and then uh, yeah wind myself some coils because that's actually the fun bit and I know how to do that properly. One of the biggest pickups I've ever made. <laughs> um, uh, I popped some wires on, popped some magnets in, popped them in, and we had the same problem of the magnets wanting to pull each other together. So uh, as we shim down the center to hold everything in place, I went to stick it in the vacuum chamber and discovered it won't fit. So um, right now, it is the next morning, I've just been out to the shop and I've bought the big one. And because it was the Easter sale, they were two for one. <laughs> I am well sorted for um, vacuum chamber stuff. For those who are interested, it is the cinnamon seal glass container. 10 to 50 mil. Please follow the below instructions to ensure safe use of cinnamon glass. It fits. Uh, this is a good thing. <laughs> it would suck if it didn't fit in this one, because I don't know what I would do after that, but uh, this and uh, my spare one should see me right for vacuum chambers for the next uh, 
next couple of decades, I would hope. Normally, I would be mixing up some epoxy in a little dish like that. Something tells me that's not quite going to cut it. So while I was out shopping, I got some nice big disposable cups. With pickup potted and bench cleared, uh, we now turn our attention back to the neck, which has had uh, plenty of time to dry overnight. Uh, let's get the clamps off and then uh, see what we're dealing with. All right, so I've had a look at the situation, and we have a situation. When I constructed this, I started in my mind with the idea of how to construct a standard neck. Now, this is non-standard. Essentially what's happened is that I had banked on having the headstock about there, of course it isn't. Um, it's going to be there, and we've even got more of a gap here, and effectively what's happened is that because this point has shifted down there, we've actually lost that much distance off the end of the neck that way because the blank wasn't long enough to accommodate for that. So, we have solutions to this problem. Uh, the first potential solution would be to reduce the scale length, but that kind of negates the entire point of having a multi-scale base, is that you have a really, really long B-string. Um, I could gain 26 millimeters, <laughs> and uh, but that would bring me straight down to Fender standard scale length, and that's not going to, like, why, like, there's just, there would be no point. Um, the other thing I can do, and probably the easiest thing that I'm simply going to do, is to uh, lose two, or possibly even three frets off the neck. It would go from being a 24 fret to a 21, most likely. Uh, and that's fine. Um, I have checked the length of the truss rod, and where it sits at that end, and where it sits at this end, and I have got room there. The cuff would be going approximately there, so I've actually got room to to do that. That's going to make the neck pocket significantly smaller. I do have room to shift the entire neck that way depending on how I construct the bridge but I don't have a whole lot of room to play with there because between the saddles and where the body curve starts I've only got 40 millimeters in that little gap there so yeah <laughs> we're tight on space. Uh, but I think we're going to get away with it. I'm not seeing anything that's fatal. I don't have to start building a new neck yet. We'll see how many more mistakes I have to make before I get to that point. I'm going to stick with the scale lengths that I've got, and I'm going to play with neck pocket and bridge placement and get everything right. 21 frets, all in the right place. <laughs> I, we hope. <laughs>
that's kind of what I had in mind. We're getting there. Yes. Now, the headstock. You will note, I have opted for a zero fret, just because zero frets make a whole bunch of things a whole lot simpler. The nut will, of course, go in there, and all it's responsible for is the string positions. Don't have to worry about the height on that. Uh, so that's fine. The zero fret takes care of that. The rest of the headstock, though, is a bit of a conundrum. Consider that we've got a angle up here, and then the, there's, a, there's a corner there. There's a bump we have to get over right there. I want to veneer this headstock. I want to try and make this into one uh, smooth, flat piece. It also gives me the chance to uh, cover over my mistake. I'm going to have to try and bend that veneer. The other thing that I have to do is actually sand a little bit of the surface away from this so that uh, to compensate for the thickness of the veneer, take a couple of millimeters off, and that gives me the chance to actually try and sort of blend this curve in. So the whole thing's going to wind up sort of sanded, sort of sideways. Um, <laughs> uh, the thing that I want to avoid though is taking off too much and actually having the headstock come at a slight angle. It, it, it could appear as if it's twisted um, if I follow that curve too much around there. So. Uh, yeah, we are officially in the twilight zone, as far as guitar shapes and guitar styles go. It's not exactly uncharted territory, because lots of people have done this before, but uh, I've seen their designs online, and I don't really like them. So I don't have one that I like, so <laughs> I'm, I'm literally making this up as I go. You can probably tell. I'm going to cut a piece of the body top. I'm just going to take as thin a slice of this as I can uh, and uh, get some get some nice grain and just glue it onto the top of there uh, and hopefully I can get it to conform to whatever whatever shape this surface winds up being. Okay, so I have taken enough thickness off there to sort of round out that side and I've actually just had to chisel, I didn't want to take off too much off here and wind up with the thing on a weird angle so then I just chiseled out a little bit on that side uh, and now I've got a plate that will sit not quite perfectly flat but it's only got to glue down that much and I can probably use a heat gun to uh, actually bend that bit of wood so that it'll just want to sit there and just stay exactly where I put it. Uh, and then of course with a nut uh, to fill that gap, uh, it should look like a pretty seamless transition. It's not perfectly flat. Uh, nothing on this instrument is perfectly straight, except for the center line, and that's only hypothetical enough to actually string an A string down it. So, uh, Right, yeah, I'm going to hit this with the heat gun and see if I can get it to sort of conform to a shape. If not, I'll just have to clamp it down and hope the glue does its job, but uh, potentially going to be quite a good result, but it's a very, very weird way of getting there. This bit of tomfoolery out of the way, I suppose that's a pretty good place to call the episode. Next episode will be metalwork. Frets and bridge, pretty much uh, solid metalwork the whole way. Oh yes, I've got to carve the neck as well. Uh, oh, and stain it. Actually, next episode's going to be pretty jam-packed. 
maybe even more jam-packed than this one so you better come back and watch that thank you very much for watching this one though uh, thank you very much for subscribing and uh, i will see you in a couple of days cheers